Hello. What's happening, everyone? What's happened? What's happening, everyone? I'm already stumbling. I'm distracted by these little bubbly noises in my ears right now. Welcome to another Techno Tuesday on 343 Labs TV, brought to you by 343 Labs and myself. And for some reason, is the Skype working? I want to introduce you to our friend and sidekick here at 343 Labs. Give it up for Thomas, everybody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? And then in the background, there's my daughter. She's doing her dance class online. Oh, she ran away. <laughs> Let's turn... Oh, the, ah, sorry. Hey, there she is. Hi. So I've, I'm just surrounded by... Yeah, that's right. She's showing off to her friends what her dad is doing. All right, that's enough. That, friend, friend. Okay. Anyway, let, let us get through this. Let's say hello to Andrew. Once again, Andrew Duke is in the house. Hey, Robot Dharma, thanks for the air horn. P.A. Tuseth, hello. Another techno day with a big smile. I agree. Okay, now, away with you, preteen. Run away. Uh, yes, we know. We see you. Okay, I'm going to have to turn the camera off. <laughs> That's why you're doing this. Yeah. Okay, let's see. All right, goodbye. <laughs> There's just <laughs> now they can't see you anymore. You might as well just give me a break. Thank you very much. You can always oh, count on a little bit of mayhem because I'm here at home with my family, and there you 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 can dance, but just dance quietly because I got to talk to these people who are here to hang out and make music with the, or listen to me make music. So. um Anyway, as you all know, the usual deal is I'm going to work on stuff and you can listen and ask questions and feel free to, uh, you know, type in your questions into the chat there. Thomas will follow along and uh, I will check in periodically. Uh, and uh, yeah, so today I'm kind of, um, I've got a track that is mo it's starting to be arranged. I would say it's about 75% there. And I took you know some of the material from a couple playing around with the with the mega fm and uh basically i've started to flesh this out into something more finished and i've been trying to kind of decide where to go with it um and right now mm. I'm, I'm at this point let's take a look at what i've got here um let's see what i've got going on with you it doesn't even look like there's that much here but it's quite full sounding there's a lot going on uh, I've got two tracks recorded from the Mega FM into audio, which are, it's basically the same part, but slightly different sounding. I've got a, a part here, some chords, sort of arpeggiated chords going on with the operator. Two kick drums, which isn't something I don't do, it isn't something I do a lot of, but somehow it sounded cool this time. And then a, a hi-hat. So there's room for more here. Uh, I've got a, a, most of the structure, you can see it's out to eight minutes. It's longer than it's gonna be, you, probably. Um, and now we're, we're at a decision-making phase. We're like, which direction do I go? Is it gonna stay tracky and simple? Uh, or do I, it, and, cause it started real tracky and simple and then it's starting to creep into becoming a little more musically developed. So some, there's a chord change in there. There's a bit of a progression, uh, just very subtle. And I'm starting to think I, I could take this big and make it a little bit more grand and put in some big string sounds and some, you know, build it up and make it more melodic or do I or keep it more tracky and simple. And, that, and then I also need to find extra percussion, some little ear, ear candy, perhaps. So that's where we're at today. Now, <laughs> Max is asking, who's the special guest? Max, that's my daughter. And she's having fun. Eleven, she's sprouting like a beanstalk. She's so tall. I just had to get her a new bicycle, and she just finished her uh, dance class, her online dance classes this morning, and she's in a good mood. So that was what was going on there. <laughs> and uh, I feel like our whole intro went a little bit too fast. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna calm down here for a minute, and let's just say hello again to Thomas and see how Thomas is doing. What's up, Thomas? Hey, not too much. Uh, you know, just excited for another stream here on 343 TV. Um, as you guys know, it seems like we got a lot of regular viewers in here, uh, but this is presented by 343 Labs, which is, you know, music school and community. Now pretty much uh, a global community. You know, we have our location in Manhattan where we started out. We've got our location now open in Berlin, which is super exciting. 
Um, and of course, we got online classes. So these live streams all obviously are online too, just uh, kind of branching out into that global, that global audience. So you know, nothing else, too much going on. Just excited for uh, some more techno today uh, to get into you know some arrangement. I really liked um, what I was hearing at the beginning of the stream, kind of in the backgrounds. This uh, this piece you were working on, so I'm excited to see you know what it's going to turn into. Thanks, Thomas. Me too. I have an idea, yeah. but you know we can always uh, take some input from you guys. I'm I'm open to suggestion. Uh, but let's do this. Let's start with taking a listen to what I have so far. And uh, you know sometimes it's good to just calm, be calm, open up your brain and your mind, and I can you know stop shooting my mouth off for a minute and let's hear what we've got to work with. Oop, it's soloed. That was anticlimactic. Here we go.
right. That's about as far as I've got. It just loops from there. So just to give any, give you guys an idea of where we're at, what I've got so far, and um, you know, just hearing it all in context gives you a better idea of, you know, I had ideas about what I might do while I was listening. Um. So let's see. I've got a got a question here. P a tooth Tusseth says the I love those oh it's not a question it's just a statement thank you I love those arps the arps from the mega fm that's right I've got let's look at those and this is kind of where I started with the arrangement here actually so it's a good thing to look at first um so basically I recorded myself jamming and just tweaking the knobs and you can see this is the whole clip that I originally recorded and um, I recorded myself, you know, it's just the same pattern playing over again, and I'm just tweaking the parameters on the synth to make it brighter, to make it darker. I like playing with the envelope shapes to make it, you know, maybe a little more plucky, a little less, a little smooth. You know, you can change the shape over time. And I just did one long take of this, you know, for a few minutes. And... You know, this plus a kick drum and just gave me the outline for my arrangement, basically. I did go through and make some edits. There were some parts that needed to be extended and some parts that didn't sound great that I cut out. And you can see that here in the arrangement where I've cut different sections. And right here, this is a good example of what I'm talking about, because I've made a couple little tweaks with the synth. It gets bright there and sort of ringy for a second. And right there was a transition point. So, you know, as soon as that happened, you know, this was a place where I dropped the kick drum out and introduced the hi-hats. Let's mute that second mega FM part. And I could have just made the whole track only this. Just this synth, the, the kick drum, a couple other percussion elements, and that's it. Keeping it sort of minimal, and I may still do that. All right, let's jump ahead a little bit. There's a part, you know, I started cutting up. There were some mistakes and things in here, and this is where I, I kind of fixed some fixed the arrangement so that it flowed in the way I wanted to. But then when I did that, I wasn't necessarily getting all the the tweaking and you know real time playing around with the sound that I was doing. So I started thinking about what I needed to do to create variation with the synth. And so you start to see some automation with I'm using the EQ8 as a filter, and I just I have a delay in there, or actually it's just this, uh, automating this the send level to the return for this transition part. There's a, a bit of a crossfade at the end where I, I repeat it to make it sound so it didn't just suddenly switch to a totally different part. Uh, I have that cross. It just smooths out the transition a little bit. You don't even notice it that much when the when all the drums are in there and everything. But So, yeah, this was the sort of the starting point for the whole thing. And there's another transition using automation of just a filter and the amount of delay. You know, kind of almost that that's almost like a DJ transition where, you know, you're playing in your DJ mixer and you sweep the filter up and back down again when the kick drum comes back. Really simple, but very effective on just that one synth part. Um, and then I, when I was playing around with this, I recorded this and then the, you know, the MIDI was still sending out 
to the Mega FM. So, and it sounded cool. It was, they started playing together by accident at a different octave. So I decided to capture that. So I added a layer of another layer of that same pattern, but just with different settings. Kind of brightens it up a little bit. Sort of accentuating the, the pluckiness of it. It, start, it's, it. it almost sounds like a plucked string in a way. So another comment from PA Tusith, I like leaving it this way, very DJ tool-ish. I agree, and I will. And basically, this happens a lot when I'm making a track. I'll start with an idea, and then I'll go way beyond my original idea, and then I'll rein it back in, but save versions along the way. So right now, this is on its way to becoming more musical and sort of more synthy, and I'm, I'm going to add some strings to it, I thought, and make do this kind of lush Detroit chords section. But then I'm probably going to I'm going to go back and edit it so I have just the tracky version too. Um, I got a question for you, John. Yes. In terms of the uh, the automation, so you've got a lot going on in terms of automation, some of which was done, you know, live on the synth. I'm assuming and. Uh, a lot of what you just showed us here in Ableton, uh, you know, you've got some going on. And my question is, when you're, you know, performing on the synth, do you think of it in terms of, you know, oh, there's certain things I'm going to go back and be able to do in live? Or are you kind of just in the moment automating things, experimenting, and then, um, you know, kind of seeing where that takes you? I would say the, that the latter. Uh, when I'm, if I'm, perf you know, I'm recording a take, tweaking a part on a synth in hardware, and I know I'm committing mm -hmm. it to audio. And there's always going to be something that I didn't think of or that I didn't set up for. I mean, okay, I ran it through a delay, so it already has some effects on it. I could have, you know, and people who are more working in a dollless kind of mode, you know, they, you know, they need to think ahead more about the effects chain and how to perform with it. Um, yep. But, you know, since I'm, you know, definitely DAW-based and most of my finishing the production is going to be in the box... Um, I worry a little bit less about that and more just about what the synth is doing. And, you know, and if there's effect, an effect involved, uh, I'll incorporate that. You know, in this case, I've got this delay pedal that the Mega FM is running through. But even that's not doing that much, just sort of a little filling in with a rhythmic delay to make it sound a bit more complex. It's not exaggerated. Um, gotcha. Mostly I'm just tweaking the synth parameters. And I don't, yeah, it's in the moment. And the, what I do think ahead about is timing of transitions. You know, if I say, all right, I want my track to be six minutes, I'm going to try to, you know, think, okay, this, this is what the synth sounds like when I'm in my intro part. And, this, and you don't have to necessarily do it all in order, because as you saw, you can go back and edit things to play around in the structure. It doesn't, and yep. it also, it doesn't have to be like a perfect live performance where the first take is exactly how it's going to be. No, I mean, if you want to practice and do that, fine. But what I do is I think about what types of transitions and what types of sections I want to have. So I know, all right, I'm going to want the synth to be kind of low and filtered and dark and out of the way for one section. And then sometimes I want it to be louder and brighter and fuller for another section. And then I need to figure out how I'm going to transition from one to the other. So that's what I'm thinking yeah. about is, and then I'll usually, I'll do a few minutes of being careful about transitions, like, okay, eight bars, 16 bars, 12 bars, like just trying to think about even numbers of, of sections that I might use. And then, and then I'll get those down where I know, okay, I can use this 16 bar section, bang, right? But then after I do a few of those, I'll, I'll get weird and I'll just push the boundaries and make it, I'll break the sound or just, I, did, I didn't do so much with this one, but sometimes yeah. after I've captured what I wanted, I'll go and then mm -hmm. do the weird stuff and play and experiment and you might get some cool effects or transitions or you know ideas from fooling around, so. That, that's yeah, usually how I, I think do it. that's that's cool and it's like almost a little bit of a performance you know standpoint for some of that but i think what's cool when you're producing is being able to go out there and do that more experimental stuff without the fear of you know breaking the sound system or whatever it is you know or having the audience react strange and then kind of picking it apart and implementing it back into the track yes yeah, we did have a uh, another question come in somewhat related it's about performing actually they said TWD Industries, when performing, how many parameters do you have control over at one time, uh, typically? Uh, well, in in actual live performance or in the studio, it, it would be different because when I've set up for doing live, I place limitations on the number of things that I see in front of me and work within mm -hmm. those limitations. And 
I liked, I'm, I'm kind of old school. I, I go, if I have to perform live with like, and menu dive and do button combinations to get to a thing, I, uh, I'd rather have like one knob, one fader, one button per function and get the muscle memory to know this does this, this does this and set that up ahead of time. In terms of in the studio, there's no limit really, um, you know, because I'm free to mess up. And if I hit the wrong thing, no big deal. I can stop and fix it uh, or record it again. Um, I think it depends on the synth. It depends on the device. Like you just choose the parameters that you want to play with on this, the mega FM. Most of what I was doing was playing with the envelope controls and the amount of modulation coming from an operator. So probably, you know, a handful, five, six different parameters just for that sound, the way I had it set up. I could have done more, but uh, you know, it did what I needed to do just, only looking at those. So it just depends on the sound and the device and right. Cool. Let's let's go back to what's going on here. So I've got we, we, we looked at the synth part, that's sort of the main thing. And then I added this operator part, which and this is a particular thing that I you know, it's not a new thing, but it's something I've liked to do for this style of music. And I'll do like a a repeated chord so it's not like a it's not a arpeggiation or diff, it's or a, a one note sequence it's a it's a fast sequence of chords you know i just i drew in each of those chords separately on 316 notes and it's just looping and i added actually i, I drew them in and then i I decided to add a, a seventh on top of it, so it's actually it's only playing triads in the MIDI, but there, now it's it's playing a bigger chord because of Live's chord device adding an additional seven semitones on top of each note that I play. And to give it some life, some sort of semi-random sort of life, there's a velocity MIDI effect in here with the random on, and so every note that's playing within each chord is playing each note is every time you hear it it's a slightly higher slightly lower velocity and then i have a, this simple sound an operator actually just started like this just the sine wave and then There's a little, just slightly, a little bit more brightness coming from operator B, and then this is actually doing something a little bit noisy. We can't really hear it right now because it's all because it's all filtered down. And then here, I do have the filter going on, and then the filter cutoff is being controlled by the velocity. So you hear it more later when it gets bright. But basically, you hear some of the automation coming in now, bringing in that noisier modulator. It sort of gets buzzy. Anyway, it's just giving it's giving a little bit of bubbly kind of life to those chords. And every time you hear a note played, it's just very slightly different because of that randomized velocity. Anyway, so this is where the track, be, you know, adding this element, it's not sort of DJ tool tracky anymore. Now it's like harmony and doing this transposition to the main sequence. And then, you know, I, I do this kind of little bit of a build up and then the second kick drum comes in and it sound, starts to sound tough and right there for sure i bringing down the musicalness of it and going back to being tracky finding that contrast between this pretty section and then more bass less notes less high frequency melody it's still there but it's in the background i mean i thought about maybe cutting out or filtering out this higher plucky one here Let's try that. So, you know, th this is the kind of trial and error that I'll go through. What bar is that? 93. When I'm working on an arrangement and you just, you go through each transition and you decide, okay, does this need to stay? Does this need to go? Does this need to change to get the feeling that I want at that moment?
So it's subtly different without that higher layer of synth in there. I'm kind of 50-50 on whether I want to keep it in or take it out. It also could depend on what else I add there. And that's another stage of the arrangement that I'm at here is what elements are missing that need to come in. I mean, I'm already, I think I need another more strong kind of hi-hat in there maybe, like more of an open kind of hi-hat. Maybe like some ride cymbals, get some sizzly high frequencies on top of there. I mean, those are just bread and butter moves that always work pretty much. Uh, and that's a spot where, that, where there's a, a spot of contrast where something's coming in and something's going out. This is a place where, oh, okay, put in a ride cymbal or a crash or something or an effect. All these points of transition are where I, what I want to look at for like small changes, ear candy, or figuring out whether something needs to be there or not. Someone said it's Detroit Robert Hood track. Very, <laughs> I will admit. Absolutely. I mean, Robert Hood is one of my favorite producers. You know, his kind of style of minimal techno, I, you know, call this uh, a tribute to guys like Robert Hood for showing us these styles and showing us the way. This is, you know, absolutely. thinking let's find a hi-hat one in here uh, I can hardly read this it's too small there's a hi-hat in here that sounds like a 909 but it's not and it's really cool that's not exactly what I was thinking of that's closer to what I want it's a little it's bright but still a little bit of thickness to it let's throw that in there and see if it works Easy. But where does it come in? Lost in all this automation. Too many tracks open. Go away. Aha. All right. I was wondering, like, the hi-hat is missing. It's because I stopped the wrong clip. So we want to go from here. And then... Got the first version of the closed hi-hat coming in. And then we have this one. A little with the roll in it. That might work. But maybe not. Let's try it here. That's better. Bigger jump up. Make it a little bit shorter. Hey, John. Yes. Uh, something just came up, so I'm going to have to hop off for a moment. Okay. That's all right. You do what you got to do. We're going to sit here and roll along with this groove. <laughs> All right, sounds really good, man. I appreciate it. All right. All right, now we got our first sort of break here.
Here's a question I was thinking about earlier. Do I leave the hi-hats in or not? But then now what? It's sort of anticlimactic because, you know, those little hi-hats have so much energy. Well, they're loud, but... So the other thing I was thinking of earlier, maybe if this drops out here, and then the, the closed hi-hat... Or the uh, now they kind of sound like two layers of closed hi hats, but I miss it when it goes away. That's okay when that halfway through when the the louder hi hat the upbeat hi hat stops is all right. These small details, like when a hi-hat comes in and out, can like make or break a transition. Maybe I worry about it too much, but I feel like I might as well get it right, huh? What happens if I switch to the other closed hi-hat there without the roll? A little more of a contrast. It doesn't not work. What happens if they stop suddenly? Like they used to, but this time it's going to be more exaggerated because there's two hi-hats going away. Too much. That doesn't sound good by itself. All right. Split the difference. What if they switch halfway through? All right. Max says add a sax. D can you play something for me? What if I just keep them in the whole time? That also works. Not taking them out removes the problem and simplifies it. Let's find that kind of ride symbol type thing. But uh, actually, let me go. Uh, <laughs> I don't have uh, Thomas here to keep track of the chat for me anymore. So let's make sure I'm not missing anybody. Andrew says, I find with arrangement, the closer you get to the finish, the more challenging because you're doing from rough change to fine details as you go. Absolutely. It does. It's like you can get like 90% of the way there and then you hit this like really slow progress doing the tiny last details, right? I agree. But press on through it because it's worth it. Um, Chris NYC asks, do you use a spectrum analyzer on your master at any point during the production process to gauge where your track stands dynamically? Specific decibel targets? Uh, roughly. I mean, I, I, I like to have a good rough uh, mix, a balanced mix from the beginning. And as you'll see, I mean, people will say, don't do your mix through mastering effects, but I've got a bus compressor and a limiter on here. I usually don't use the limiter when I'm mixing. This is here to protect the levels going into the stream so I don't clip. Um, and it's barely doing anything. It's not squashing it and making it super, super loud. It's still dynamic. But I do mix a lot through a nice bus compressor. And I do pay attention to my overall levels. I mean, you can see, like, nothing's real loud on my tracks. And, you know, I do think about your, you know, like minus 12 to minus 24, sort of where the average level is, and it occasionally peaks over. And then a louder sound, like, you know, the kick drum's the loudest thing in this mix, and that one's hitting above minus 12. It's, not, it's still not loud, right? I, leave, I like to mix with a lot of headroom so I can easily turn things up if I need to without going too high. And I also definitely look at the signal flow between devices you know insert effects and things like that to you know just to keep it balanced so it's accurate yes so yes i do i think of that but i i try not to let it get in the way of being creative so sometimes i'm if i'm on a roll and i'm not paying attention to the levels 
and I'm just then I can fix it later. But most of the time nowadays, I try to have a pretty polished, not too rough of a rough mix from the beginning. For sure. Uh, I've got another question. Do you, if PA2 says, do you pass any of your tracks through a preamp to beef it up, maybe pushing the pre? Do you, If you mean by external preamps, no. I'm not like going out of the box and then back in again. But I do use plugins that do saturation and tonal variation on these sounds. I mean, even just live's saturator. Did I use it in here? If, any, if it's anywhere, it's on the kick. Nope. Nope. So, okay, yeah. What is going on with that? This kick has a big reverb on it. Okay, I didn't even I didn't even really do this one like crazy. I didn't I didn't like saturate it. You know, this is a synthesized kick that that I made, and I did the like rolling rumbly reverb thing with it, and it's it's very compressed. All right, so yeah, in, in this particular case, I, I haven't used any kind of preamp type sort of saturation. Um, you know, if I had a, if I was in the studio again and I had hardware set up and, you know, I mean, I used to share a studio space with some people and we had really nice gear and rack effects and you could like patch things in whenever you wanted. And I might do it if I had it, but here at home in my living room, in my, uh, my like, family living room streaming studio setup that I have. <laughs> I don't have all the gears, so I'm not really doing too much outboard. It's a good idea, though. I mean, you should do it if you can. So, anyway, let's just... We're already talking to the chat. Let's just take a moment to acknowledge, again, that this is 343 Labs TV, brought to you by 343 Labs, a music production school in New York City, and now very recently in Berlin. Uh... Berlin is open for in in real life classes, and I believe also 343 Labs in New York is starting to open up again. You definitely, if you're interested, if you're in New York and you feel like online classes are not the thing for you, but you want to get in the room with the instructor, you know, following all the safety guidelines, of course, we've got all that info available for you on our website. Please visit our website to see what upcoming courses we have. Um, and anyway, yeah, that's... The school and 343 Labs uh, and the community around it is why we're here streaming every day of the week uh, to reach out, to kind of broaden our global reach and expand our community and let you guys know what we're into and what we're doing. And uh, obviously, <laughs> I'm into techno. I've produced a lot of different kinds of music, but generally, you know, techno, electro, and various shades of Owen oh, House as well. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time, and uh, I occasionally teach Ableton Live courses at 343 Labs, and I also do a synthesis and sound design course, synthesis and sound designer for producers. Uh, the whole idea with that is to kind of approach synthesis and sound design from a musical perspective, from a composition and creative use perspective, to understand you know, the types of synthesis out there to kind of demystify it, to open up the door for you as a musician, as a producer, as a composer, whatever it is you want to do to, you know, understand what synths do what, what they're good at, what they sound like, you know, know your colors, know your color palette as an artist, you know, know which tools, which brushes and which colors to put together to get the result that you want. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I like teaching it. I like to work with people. Uh, you know, we have small class sizes. It's kind of like a group private lesson. And I encourage people to share the music that they're working on. And we try to work on synthesis and sound design in the context of the students' work. And uh, another thing is that I tend to rather, I'd rather teach you guys how to listen and analyze and hear the details and then learn the tools and then apply them in your own way than to give you recipes of like, how do I do this sound from this genre? I mean, okay, we do that a little bit, but generally we'll, I like to do a lot of kind of ear training and listening and l breaking down sounds and figuring out what's happening there, what's changing, what kind of synth could do that. Let's try it. You know, that, that's sort of the process and, and try to get people to experiment and play, be playful with these, uh, these instruments. So anyway, if you're interested in that, check out 343labs.com and see what courses we have going forward. Uh, both online, which I'm doing generally, and then also, as I mentioned, we have 
in real life classes in Berlin opening and New York is opening up again soon as well. So definitely uh, have a look. Subscribe here on whatever platform you're on right now. Probably if you're on YouTube, you know, follow, subscribe, all of that. Help us out. And uh, let's get back to the music. Right. So Andrew says, appreciating this arrangement session, Mr. Selway. Thank you, Mr. Duke. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to get over to, let's see, I was thinking about doing something musical and adding kind of a anthemic section. I mean, you know, we've got to be, I want to ride the line here. I don't want this to turn into like, you know, trancy melodic techno all of a sudden. I want to keep the underground kind of Detroit minimal vibe, but I also like chords <laughs> and I like chord progressions. So let's see if we can ride the line here and uh, figure out kind of where in the arrangement this would work. Uh, I mean, it could be as soon as this first break here. I've got a string sound already set up. You know, it could be as simple as just adding kind of like a pad, like sustained thing in the break, just kind of smooth it out and provide contrast. And or I could start stacking it up and getting a little bit more rich sounding. These kinds of sounds, though, they can really take over. Uh, you got to be careful adding an element like this to a track that already has a certain energy because it could kind of make it sleepy. And Avon Bark Stada, Stada, this probably would turn into melodic techno. Yeah, okay. But like melodic techno as a beatport genre or techno that is melodic? I like to make those distinctions. Like there's plenty of real underground, awesome, futuristic techno that's got lots of melody and chord progressions in it that is not quote unquote melodic techno, right? It doesn't have that same sort of hallmark of a specific genre that you hear over and over again with certain producers lately not dissing it some of it's really great um no i like melody so you can totally be techno and futuristic and play chords absolutely if you look at like some early detroit techno for example some of it's very musical and soulful it continues to be it's not even just used to i mean look at like underground resistance and they're kind of jazzy anthemic kind of housey techno tracks that they've done that are just beautiful with saxophone max with saxophone um, all right, I'm going to play around a little bit more with this. I need to get to a part where there's a chord progression going on. Let's put this into a clip. I'm playing the keyboard, but you can't see what I'm doing. So let's actually create, oops, there we go. There's our clip. Start with the root of the chord. Bar 
are earlier there. All right, let's build these up. I'm not doing theory class, Max. All minor. Anyway, this is what I was playing on the keyboard. Should I just keep adding notes and making it denser and denser? What do you think? <laughs> That's a lot of notes. I'm not sure about this. It works, but this is a choice now as, a, as the producer has to decide, is this the way I want to go with this? Do I want to make it anthemic and uplifting and musical and borderline sort of, you know, melodic techno trancey kind of vibe? But I don't know. I think because of the, the sonic signature of it with the kind of Rob Hood inspired FM synth sequences and the darker techno vibe of the groove in general. If I do this right, if I, I mean, this might, I need to maybe spend some more time going through sounds or modifying sounds or, you know, going all the way to building up a sound myself to get just the right flavor. Another thing I was thinking about, it was dividing up in layers and maybe have like a more bassy low kind of bottom end and then a brighter, shinier uh, top for the chords. So, Regina Siller says, how about adding a Detroit steel chain bang? Hmm. Like as a percussion element? Maybe. I'd need to find just the right sample or sound for that. Andrew Duke says, Van, Van, is it Vangelis or Vangelis? Does somebody, I've never bothered to get myself corrected on the pronunciation of that. Vangelis. Vangelis. All right. You guys can't talk back to me, so how would I? Anyway. Cool techno. Awesome. You can go without a sax. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, here's what we're going to do. If Max, I don't know if Max is still on. I am going to bounce this. Once I get the arrangement more fleshed out, I'm going to bounce this, send it to Max. He can, in Berlin, he can lay down some, a sax solo on top of it in the break or something. And then we'll see if it works. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. I challenge Max to do some techno sax <laughs> with this track. Why not? Let's have some fun with this. And then we'll feature that in an upcoming uh, episode of Techno Tuesday where we figure out how techno sax can be. All right? What do you say? I think we can go along with that. All right. I'm going to go back to this. 
I'm going to pause on the synth for a second and maybe work a little bit more on the percussion and see what I can get going in terms of uh, the arrangement here with, okay, the hi-hats I'm working on, a ride cymbal. I mean, a 909 ride always works. Nowadays, I like to try to like avoid the generic obvious samples, but sometimes also they just work. And I was thinking of putting it in here after this set, this break where the, the strings have distracted me. So let's get back to some more utilitarian tracky elements. And I'm going to build up a nice sounding 909 ride instrument for us. All right, maybe if I type in ride. Okay. There it is. Uh, you going to give it to me? There. All right. I hear Thomas. Hey, he's back just in time. Yeah, I am back. I went to, uh, you know, check back in and see how everything's going. Oh, fine. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I put in that pad thing with the, or the strings and I'm like, I'm on the fence about whether I want to go that way. But, but gotcha. we tried it and it is a possibility. It may still be a possibility. Uh, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm back on the percussion side and I'm still just sort of thinking about filling in the arrangement with things that are missing and a ride cymbal, which is just almost always works in this kind of music. And I'm going for the classic 909 ride sample, but I'm going to polish it up and make it sound special. Awesome. And um, all right, let's make get a pattern. Mm. All right. Let's make this thing sound shiny and not too chunky. Really simple pattern, just eighth notes where the every quarter is accentuated, so... Oh, I did the uh, 16th notes by mistake. So we'll just multiply it, and now we have eighth notes. I'm going to classic mode. I'm turning the re-trigger off. So they overlap, and now they're not cutting each other off, and it sounds more ringy. I'll high pass it. Randomly pan them a little bit. Spread in stereo a little bit. All right. It's already sounding nice. EQ. What are these hands in front of my face? It's it's Nara, everybody. She's interrupting my... This is my job. I get paid for this. <laughs> this puts food on the table for you. Okay. All right. Wrong timing. Seriously. Thank you. All right. Techno dad's getting cross. Seriously. Thank you for giving me space to finish up my job. All right. So there's the ride. Uh, maybe a little delay on there. And, and then we'll see how it all fits together. Mm, there we go. All right. Okay, that'll do. But we want this to come in here. All right, maybe I don't want it banging on the quarter notes. Maybe I want it to be a little more bouncy. So let's let's reverse that. Let's make uh, the quarter notes quieter and the eighth notes in between a little louder better
couple little 16th notes in there. Always be careful with how loud your rides are. If they're too loud, they just take over everything. We just want to add this little sizzle to the top at the right moment and then take it away at the right moment, pretty much. Bringing your rides in and out is just like such a standard bread and butter techno move that always works. I'm going to randomize the tuning as well. Why not? Three triggers on, sample and hold. Thin it out a little bit more in the filter. Might even compress it. Let's see how that sounds. those chords. Kind of sounds better tuned lower. I'm still on the fence about those chords. We made some progress. Wouldn't you say? Definitely. I think it sounds cool. I think the chords are definitely an interesting touch. Yeah, and it it's not something I would have going through the whole thing. I would bring it in and then take it away and, and then have these contrasting sections so it doesn't get too crazy dreamy. Mm -hmm. Finding that balance. But yeah, I have choices. I have lots of choices. Definitely, that's a good thing. So we're we're at the end. It's one fifty nine. We should wrap up and say thank you to all of you, uh, both regulars and new names that have joined us. So uh, glad you were here. Hope you enjoyed my little bit of a, you know, part of my process of arranging this, thinking about the big picture and what elements I need and what elements need to change, and just sort of discussing the structure and. Okay, there was a little like, okay, ride cymbal sound design there at the end. But yeah, generally we're, we were looking less at how to make the sounds and more about how to arrange and, and the, looking at the structure and then making these production choices. And, you know, you could see I'm, I'm still at the crossroads, like which, you know, what elements I'm going to keep, what elements I'm going to develop. Am I going to stick with this, this pad and these strings and try to make, make it more musical? And or am I going to focus on the, the more stripped down tracky version? Or as I said earlier, probably I'll end up doing multiple versions. <laughs> that's that's the ultimate for me is just having those. I can make different versions and then pick the best one, for example. So uh, good. I think that is it. What do we got coming up uh, tomorrow? We have the logic show. The logic show. That is correct. So come back for the logic show, everyone and uh please subscribe as well 
Yes, absolutely. I said that while you were gone. I asked everybody good. to subscribe. I did my job. Staying on top of things. I love it. Very good. So, uh, whoa, where does everybody go? I'm like, there we are. Okay. Thanks, P.A. Tuzith, for hanging around. Bilal Salam. By the way, a minor and C minor are different. There's an E flat. Oh, you're talking to one of you guys. Yeah. Talk, come back for Max's music theory, right? You guys mm -hmm. can talk, discuss a lot about chord progressions and stuff like that for sure. Uh, Avon Barkstad looking for next stream of this track. Yeah, I mean, we, I might bring this back again. It depends on how things go. But good chance that it will get finished at some point and released, if not featured again on, on Techno Tuesday. So uh, I guess that's it. Oh, there's David Schwartz. I missed him earlier. Thanks for coming around again. Nice to see you. And uh, I guess we're going to sign off. So enjoy your week. Adios. Later, everybody.